Although this is kind of an older example for Monroe, it's, it's actually a great example of a lot of the different things that we do. We cannot necessarily talk about all the different programs, but we can talk about this a bit. Club Car really represents a, a large breadth of what Monroe & Associates does. It was a, a full program from concept all the way into production. When we approached this program, the first thing that we needed to understand is what does the industry need and who is the competition? If you don't understand the competition and you don't understand the voice of the customer, how do you really understand what it is that you're going to design? The first thing that we did is we went out and, and selected the top three competitive um, golf cars in the world. And we tore them down part by part, bolt by bolt to really understand not just the design and where it is today, but based on what we are seeing, where were they really trying to drive the future of the vehicle? Then we interviewed the golf pros, the golf courses, the maintenance, the, uh, the staff that's in, uh, involved with taking care of the grounds to really understand what is truly needed from everybody. You would think a groundskeeper, you know, how would they add value to, to a, a design? Well, one of the things is that when you're driving across the grass, you don't want to create ruts. So then being able to take a design and bringing your, your, your front wheels in a bit closer and your back wheels out a bit further helps eliminate the need for or you know, reduces the, the, the ruts. And what else causes ruts is when it rains. So the ground is, is, is wet, the golfer gets wet. So one of the things that, that um, we developed on, on, on the golf cart is this thing called a monsoon cover. And what is that? Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than a, uh, a gutter on a home integrated into a golf cart. So, the rain comes on here, it runs down into a gutter system, and then it distributes the water in a way that it's not under the wheels. Not only that, but if you're a golfer, you're not having all the water pouring off on you. So these are a lot of things that we consider as we are designing a golf cart. Once we understood what the design needed to be, then we, we helped you know, really just start to look at the design and, and understanding, you know, what, what the customers really wanted. And then um, looking at a couple of prototypes that kind of help where we're at. The next thing that we did is that we used one of our key software engineering tools called Design Profit, which is based on our, our lean design methodology, which basically and simply is how do we model the overall complexity of the of the competitors of the current vehicle understand where there's quality issues understand where you have high cost issues where there's processing and all the other things that need to come together to understand the total kind of cost of the vehicle from that standpoint we then look at how can we optimize the overall design that is key to the lean design methodology does the part have to move relative to the part that it's touching? Does it have to be a different material? If the answer is no, then integrate those. The, so we start by asking that question, and from there you come up with what we call a theoretical number of, of parts to build a vehicle. What that forces you to do is, is think beyond where you, you're traditionally thinking and really go out and look at wild ideas of, of different materials, you know, uh, different industries, which is what Monroe brings with the hundreds of different industries and products that we've worked on to help minimize the overall complexity, quality, and throughput of the vehicle. One, one area would be the front suspension and the frame. The, the, the front suspension for, um, was all built piece by piece. And once you're done, you have to look at setting the camber and the toe and everything in here is now built in a automotive style system where they just bring it in as a, as a unit. They 
attach it and you no longer have to build all of that online. And um, the other areas was just a lot of, of, of modular assembly to help improve that throughput. And Mike, you are a huge part of, 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 of developing the technical data packages, understanding yeah. the, the, the design layout and many of the other aspects that we needed to do to not just understand the design, but really to understand what is the manufacturing system strategy to, to build this vehicle. I think the key factor that came into play here and what really made the cost difference and simplified everything was bringing together both an innovative design concept that Monroe came up with, with the manufacturing process. Dave's already talked about the modular uh, front suspension, which is built up as a separate module and then uh, down a separate line and then assembled. But what really drove the change on this was the original frame in the previous version was a welded aluminum structure, multiple pieces, like a cage frame. What did Monroe come up with? We said, that's way too much cost, way too much complexity. So we said, how about we take some innovation in materials and manufacturing? The frame on this now is actually two extruded aluminum uh, frame rails, and then it goes into a composite floor pan that is two halves that come down together over the frame rails, vibration welded, and then further attachment points with automated driving of what are essentially self-driving screws. And we put that all together. It greatly simplified not only the cost structure for the vehicle, but then the manufacturing process as well. We then took that, and that whole process, and we helped Club Car. We did the plant layout. We did the selection of modern manufacturing equipment, specifications, put it together. And then Dave actually, in one of his first early roles, actually led the manufacturing team with the ergonomics and the layout of the floor and how to set up parts, display parts for the operators. So we simplified the operator's role and took further cost out and basically made a very, very profitable vehicle. This vehicle revolutionized the golf cart industry. Yeah, you know, and, and when we talk about optimizing uh, total costs, there was something else that, that came out of the program. And, and one are, are things that we don't necessarily consider. They did not have a huge market on all of the aftermarket pieces, right? And the accessories that you put on the car are done in a completely different area. So what we were able to do is actually integrate all of the accessories through a common attachment architecture so that they can be put on easily and quickly, no matter whether it's a, it's a sand bottle or a, or a, a, a wash tube or a bucket or a, a you know, a, a cooler. The, the attachment points were all done the same way. When you look at this sand bottle, you know, it has sand and grass seeds, so when you have a divot, you, you, can, you can fix that. But the problem with this is how do you get a tool in there to put this on? Well, you put a slot in here to run the tool. But is that really a tool slot anymore? No, what we do is we say, you know what? This is how you tell whether or not your, your sand is low. So it, it, that's what we call the bewitching feature, right? How do we get these, these cool delights that, that really don't cost any extra to engineer, but give the customer delight. Uh, you know, Mike talked about the, the assembly line. And um, one of the big things on this, this vehicle design was the, the battery system and the electronics, because the electronics were, were spread all over the frame and all over the vehicle, which, which drove, you know, that whole, you know, main assembly line linear assembly process. So we designed what we called the, the bucket, which is a feeder to the main assembly line that had the battery, the electronics and everything else. So as the vehicle came in, you just grab a hoist, pick it up, you drop it, make the connections. And that was really important for, for improving our, our overall throughput for the vehicle. And that improves the maintainability of the vehicle. Everything now is much more easily reached 
by maintenance staff at golf courses. And again, another example of design simplification to both improve the product and reduce costs and make it just a win-win around the board. When Club Car came out with this vehicle, they had a huge increase in market share because of this vehicle's capabilities, the styling on it, the performance, and they could price it where they made a really good profit because it was now costing them much less to build and they could be comp more competitive from a per price performance for the golf courses. Huge increase in market share. When you talk about price and profit and how you look at that from a total business mm -hmm. standpoint, there's, there's other decisions that need to be made early on that get tied into the design. And one such thing would be like the headlights, the, the tail lamps and other things, because a lot of the, the aftermarket headlamps and tail lamps are purchased online from other people. And you don't think about taking a, a wire harness and building a, a, a connector and leaving it inside the back of the vehicle because it adds cost to every single vehicle. But what it allows you to do is just go in the back, you drill a hole, you pull the wire through, and you now put your headlamps in there, and now you control that whole entire aftermarket. And so there, there's a lot of decisions and a lot of other things that are put into it. Plus, we all know that after the golf courses, there is the, um, the entire communities that you know are driving golf carts and retirement communities etc cetera, etc cetera. but um if you understand that and tie it into your design you're going to make different decisions they may not make sense now but in a longer business strategy they make a lot of sense so you wind up with a more stylish vehicle one that gets built easier cost less easier to maintain all through lean design and lean manufacturing. Yeah. So from an execution standpoint, you know, there's a lot of smart things that were done by Club Car because they had the senior level engineering executives, the senior level manufacturing executives working on a vision side by side to really understand how um, we're going to totally redesign this vehicle and change the golf industry, uh, golf car, car industry. And that made this very successful. And when we built the first 500 vehicles, or club car, you know, uh, as a team built the entire first 500 vehicles, it was bringing in all of the tooling, bringing in the suppliers for those tooling into one small, low rate, production area and we had them running their own tools, their own equipment to really understand what are the problems, do the troubleshooting. So when we then took the system and actually integrated within the facility, we weren't trying to debug that on a on a on a production line. Yeah. The key, and as Dave has been mentioning, was a truly collaborative team. Club car, Monroe, and all the other supply base all working together to wind up with a single, innovative, successful design.